Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to merge multiple different reports into a single report so that you can either print that out as one print job or merge it into a single PDF file that you can then send as an attachment or whatever but we're going to create a single master report, kind of like a master document in Microsoft Word that contains other documents. Today's question comes from James in Huntington, West Virginia, one of my Platinum members. James says, oh, someone just beamed in. James says, right now, whenever I send a new customer an invoice, I have to also include a copy of his contract and another sheet with some information specific to his account. Instead of having to create three PDF files from three different reports and attach them to an email, is there any way I can combine all of this into a single attachment? Yes, James, what we can do is we could take your three different reports and we can include them as sub-report objects inside of a master report. And in this video, I will show you how to do just that. Now, a couple things before you guys bring all this stuff up in the comments. Yes, I know there are third-party tools available to combine PDF reports together. I have never used any of them. I've never had a need for any of them. I don't endorse any of them or recommend them, but if you have one that you like and you use it, great. Feel free to post what it is in the comments. Yes, I know that if you have the paid version of Adobe Acrobat, they have a VBA library that you can also use to play tricks with PDF files, including merging them together. I, again, don't have the paid version of Acrobat, so I've never had a need for it. And yes, I am also aware that you can make one button, a one-click solution to take three attachments, three separate PDF files, and attach those to one email. I do cover that in my email seminar. I'll talk more about that at the end of the video. And there is one caveat. Page footers in your sub-reports won't display. So if you got any page footers in those sub-reports themselves, you won't see them. I searched the Google machine for a good hour trying to find a solution, couldn't find one. You can make a new page footer for the master document. So if you want to have like page numbers and stuff that go across the entire set of documents, that's fine. And you could put like your company logo down there. I'll show you how to do that. But any page footers in your sub-reports won't display. Page headers will. Page headers are fine. And report footers are fine. Page footers won't. I got a, a frowny face there because, come on, access team. You, you should be able to do this, right? Why can't you have page footers in the sub-reports? Come on, fix this. All right. Now, this is going to be what I consider an expert-level video. Expert means it's beyond the basics, but it's not quite developer. It's between beginner and developer. So you don't need any VBA programming to do this, but you should know your way around reports. And I'm going to list as a prerequisite for today's video, my invoicing video, because I'm going to use this database for today's video. And the invoicing database has an order form with an invoice report that we're gonna use. And the order form has a sub form on it. Sub forms behave very similarly to sub reports. And we're gonna use sub reports in today's class. Okay, so getting started, here I am in my tech help free template. This is a free database you can download off my website if you want to copy. And in here I've got a customer form and customers can have orders. Here's the order form with the order sub report, the order detail form, I call it. And here's my invoice button. And if you watch my invoicing video, you know how all this was built. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I want to generate a single report so that let's say, that, you know, this is a new customer. I want to send him the... A uh, copy of his invoice, and I want to send him a contract that's got maybe some data off of his customer form and whatever other stuff you want. You can do two, three, four of these if you want to, but we'll just do two for today. So let's create another report that's based on information on the customer. Okay, so I'm just going to take my blank report that I've got here. I'm going to copy and paste that. Control C, Control V. We'll copy this. We'll call it the contract R, my contract report. And let's right click design view. Let's modify this guy. And we'll just, uh, we'll base this on some data on the customer form. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, I'm gonna go up here to the contract reports properties and we have to have a record source. Now, previously with this guy, we built a query that got the data off the current order form, right? 
that's in the order invoice queue design view and let me show you right over here remember this we looked at the order id from the currently open order form now if you don't want to have to bother building a query for every single report like this you got to learn a little sql just a little tiny bit so we can go right in here and in this record source instead of having to pick a query watch this i'm going to zoom in shift f2 and i'm going to put an sql statement here that says show me the data from the current customer now you could base it on the customer form or you could base it on the order form since the order form is open i'll base it on the customer form keep it simple so i want select star from customer t where the customer id equals forms customer f customer id this says give me all of the fields that's the star from customer t the customer table where the customer id from that table equals the currently open customer on the customer form okay which should just return one record if you want to learn more sql check this video out okay and if this is too much for you feel free to use a query if you want just like i did in the order entry form i'm just trying to show you a little something new here okay so now this report is going to get its data from that sql statement instead of a query this right here by the way is just what's behind that query the query builder just gives you a nice way to design that graphically with all these join lines and stuff and i recommend it for queries that have multiple tables in them but for a single table query like that you can just write it like that it's nice and easy all right now that i've set the record source i can put data in here from the customer so i could put like in here i got the first name and watch this click control source drop it down oh look at that there's all the fields from the table that i just put in the sql statement all right there's first name don't forget to change the name too all right copy paste right here's first name here's last name all right change this to last name copy paste okay you get the point right this is the contract and in fact up here in the page header page header not report header page header because i'm going to show you that page header problem later all right i'm going to put copy paste i'm going to copy and paste that label up here and we're going to make this a real big contract Right. Contract. This is the this is the user's contract, and let's go to format, and we'll make this really big, like uh, forty eight point. That's too big. Go thirty six point. <laughs> there we go, and maybe bold it, and let's change the font. Go. There's my contract. Okay, and just to show you the page footer, copy paste. I'm gonna stick this down here in the page footer, just just to show you. And this drove me nuts. I was searching for a long time. Uh, this is the page footer. Okay, save it. Close it. All right, here's our contract R. If I open this up in print preview mode, you can see there we go. It's just got Richard Ross in it, and there should only be one record. Yep, page one of one right down here. There we go. All right, so whatever open customer is on this form now, John Luke Picard, for example, if I open up the contract R in print preview mode, there's Jean-Luc, okay? Now, obviously, you wanna have the same customer open as you have your invoice open for. And there's ways you can prevent the user from going back here. You can make this guy modal, right? Which prevents them from changing the customer that's open. Or like I said, you could get that customer ID from this combo box right here, either one. But now what I wanna do is whenever I generate this invoice, okay, I wanna also generate that contract for the open customer. So I'm going to have these both of these things open together. So it's going to have that as page one. And then it's going to have their invoice as page two in the same report. OK, so we're going to make each one of these a sub report inside of a third master report that we don't have yet. We're going to make it right now. So let's copy the blank again. Copy, paste, control C, control V. We'll make this the um, the let's call it the master R whatever you want to call it contract with order i don't care all right right click design view here we are now this guy we can delete that and we can get rid of all these sections up here just make their just shrink them up to nothing we're going to deal with them in a minute. all right we just want to deal with the page or excuse me the detail section right now 
Now, one thing to note, keep in mind when I set up this blank report, I set up the margins and I set up the width to be exactly what I wanted, right? I got a quarter inch margins around the page, right? I got a quarter inch margin. So it's an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. So eight and a half minus a half an inch in margins. I'm just shy of that eight inch mark. So that's the perfect width, okay? So be careful, because what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring these into the detail section. Watch this, let's put the contract in first. Click, drag, drop. Now when you do that, it pushes that right edge out. And you can see the little green thing there pop up. If you click there, you get the little warning, right? Okay, the report width is greater than the page width. All right, all you gotta do is, First, delete the label because sub reports and sub forms come in with a label, which I kind of think is dumb, but that's okay. Delete that guy, then take the sub report object and slide it all the way to the left. Now bring that right side in and that little warning goes away because this guy is exactly the width that I want too. Okay, okay, so there's the contract. Now let's bring in the order invoice R. Click, drag, drop, same thing's gonna happen. All right, get rid of that label. And you might not wanna see this whole thing, so you could find the bottom of it down here. And let's find, where's the bottom? There it is, you can drag that up. Because we're gonna make sure that these can grow and shrink in a minute, okay. And then, same thing, take this guy, slide it to the left, leave a little gap there, I'll tell you why in a minute, leave a little gap, and then bring this again to the left. There we go. Okay, so we got both of our objects in there, save it, Let's close it and do a print preview. So master R, right click, print preview. I know it's down on the bottom. You guys know, you're expert users now at this point, right? It's print previews down here. My, my, my recording window is smaller than my giant desktop monitor. So I'm just gonna go to print preview. You know what I'm doing, okay. If you've watched any of my beginner lessons, I've explained all this. All right, so there we go. Looks pretty good so far. Couple things. First of all, they're together on the same page. Right, here's the contract and here's the invoice. I want them to be on separate pages because presumably this contract, it's gonna have more stuff in here, right? You're gonna have paragraphs with the stuff, your contract text. I'm just doing this just as a simple example, right? So let's figure out a way to put the invoice on page two. All right, so design view. Now, as you might be aware of, if you add grouping and stuff like that, there's ways to force pages after sections. All you need for this is a little control. Go to report design, look in your toolbox. This little guy right there is called a page break control, right? Click on that and then just click right here between those guys and boop, there it is. See that, that little thing? If you click off it, it looks like a bunch of dots right there, see it, right there. That is a page break control. Wherever Access sees that, it's gonna throw a new page in there. Okay, all right, easy enough. And now, if I do a print preview, I got print preview on my menu here, don't I? Where is that print preview? Yeah, right there. I, I have it on my quick launch toolbar. All right, there we go. We got that. There's page one. And come here. Come to Papa. Where are you? Okay, there it is. Page one, page two. Looks good. Beautiful. All right. Next thing, uh, this dumb border that goes around the sub report. Let's get rid of that. That is going to be a property of the subreport control itself. All right, so click on that one. Shift, click on that one. Now I've got both subreport controls selected. Now I can go to Format, Shape Outline, Transparent, Save It, Print Preview, looking better. Okay, looks good, looks good. Another thing I like to do is in this detail section, I want to make sure that can grow and can shrink are both set to yes, in case, for example, the contract is blank, right? Uh, you can also do the same thing with these guys. The objects themselves have can grow, can shrink, All right? Turn that on. Okay, let's talk about these page headers and footers. Now, both of these have, well, this one has a page header. This one does not have a page header. This one just has a report header. I don't think it's got a page header, does it? Let me see. Let's take a look. Yes, let's take a look at the actual invoice itself. All right, the invoice design view. Uh, okay, we do have a page header. It's this product and then quantity, unit price, and then the line. And then the page footer has the page one of one, one of two, and then the make checks payable to. All right, so when we do it here, we see there's the line and we see our page footer. When we open up the uh, sub report or the master report, 
we are seeing, wait a minute, did I open oh, the wrong one? Come on, master report, right click, print preview. Okay, there we go, there's page one. No page header here, okay, and come on, I thought I saved you. Save, okay, go to the next page. And now notice here, there's no page header, right? I, I got the report header, but there's no page header right in there and there's no footer. Okay. Back to our master R design view. Now, again, open up the properties for both of these guys. Right click properties. Okay, click, click. Down here, there's a property that says Show page header and page footer. Turn that to yes. Now, like I said, I messed with this for a good hour. I searched the Google machine. I looked at all my books that are on my shelves and I got lots of them. I looked through Microsoft's documentation on their website, which is, yeah. Um, I can get the page header to display. Good luck getting the page footer to display. So access team, I implore you, do one of two things. Either A, fix it so we can display the page footer because it doesn't show up no matter what I do. Or B, change this prompt so it says show page header and put a little information something on there that says you're out of luck for page footers. Do one of those two things, please, Access Team. I love you guys. I really do. I love you. I love Access. I love your work. But fix that, okay? That's annoying. <laughs> So once you change that setting to yes and save it, close it, close it. Let's open it up again, print preview. Okay, there's my header. And again, it's not saving the reports positioning. It's another one of my pet peeves. Okay, but there's no footer down here. So we got our page header. We got no page footer. Page header right there. There it is. There's the page header. No page footer. And something, I just got a message from some. I've been getting weird spam lately on my phone. Uh, usually I, I mute my phone when I make a video, but I forgot to today, so sorry about that. In fact, one thing you'll notice is that the page footer is completely ignored, even in the code. Now, this isn't a, a programming video, but I just want to show for those of you who do know a little bit of VBA. If you go into, let's go into the contract here, design view. Okay, if you go into the page footer, right click, and go into build event. This is the VBA code that runs when this section gets basically drawn, okay? And you can say message box, hi, right in there. That'll pop up a message. Save it, right? Close it, close it. And if I print preview this now, watch this, print preview. There's my hi and where are you? Oh, come here. I hate it. There's my page footer right down there. See it? Okay, but watch this. If I open up the master R, print preview, I don't even get my high. So it just ignores that section completely, whatever codes in there, anything, okay? But that's okay. Now that we know that, we can work around it. Let me uh, let me take that out of there real quick. I don't want that, oop, wrong one. We don't want that code in there. Design view, give me my code, and we'll just delete that. Okay. Now, if you want like a page number and a footer, that's fine, but it's gonna go across your entire master document, which if you're sending someone something that's got the contract and whatever info sheet and their invoice, you might want them to know, hey, this is page one of six and there's six pages in this attachment. Nothing wrong with that, right? So I'll go to, let's use the one off the invoice, design view. Here's the page footer. And I'll leave this here because if you print out an invoice by itself, you'll still get that, right? But I'll copy that one. Let's go to the master R, design view, and we'll throw it in this guy's page footer. So you won't get both of them. You'll just get this one if it's the master. And you might now want to have make checks payable to, maybe just put in here, you know, just your, whatever, your address on them. Okay. And slide it over the edge and we'll bring that up a little bit, save it. Close it, and now if I look at my master uh, print preview, you can see there it is. It's right down there on this page one of two, and then the next page. It's like doing that. And the next page right there, there's page two of two. There's your invoice. And so that's okay. It, it looks good. It works. You just got to know that if you do it as part of a master document. But now you can do these two, 
You can do whatever other pages you want, print them all out together. Here's the PDF, right? Or print it as the same job. You just save it right there, right? Master R. And that's it, all right? You can now send this as an attachment, a single attachment in your emails. How do you do that? Well, I got a video for that too. I think I just made this one like last week too. A one click, create the PDF, attach it to an email, send it out with Outlook, right? And that's, you can do that now with just, you can do multiple reports now with that. And I'm also gonna put a link down below in the link section to this. This is a related topic, but this is to send multiple invoices to different customers if you want to. It's, uh, people ask me about this one all the time, so I figured I'd just mention it. All right, you wanna learn a lot more about this good, good stuff, this access development stuff? Well, I got a lot of different uh, classes available for you. Uh, I've got an SQL seminar, if you like that SQL stuff, right? At least part one teaches you all the basics of select statements, you know, the where clauses, the order by, all that good stuff, so you can use those in your forms and reports instead of having to make queries for everything, okay? Then part two goes into action queries, you know, things like append queries and delete queries and update queries and all that nifty stuff. And then part three is about manipulating the structure of your tables. That's pretty cool too. If you wanna learn more about sending emails from Access, I got this email seminar, it covers lots of different stuff. Here's all the goals there. I'm not even gonna go over it all. It's all kinds of stuff. We do newsletters, we do sending through Outlook, we do sending through Gmail, sending through any SMTP server, uh, doing a mail merge right inside of Access. Uh, all kinds of stuff on my email seminar. We build an email server application so you can have one computer sitting over there in the corner sending emails all day and it collects them from everybody on your network. So if you got 30 people, they're all sending their emails out through the same server. Really cool stuff. Man, if you want to learn more about sub reports, I cover them in detail in my Access Expert Level 9 class. So check that out too. But there you go. Well, that is going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the video's up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming as long as you keep watching them I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You could find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing. Free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, 
Go watch level two. It's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.